in continuing with this circuits analogy, um, I'm going to just review again. Remember what a voltmeter does? A voltmeter measures the potential. In this case right here, in the analogy, it was a difference in chocolate. In real life, it measures a difference in electric potential. So we call that one volt. And remember what the ammeter does? It's connected directly in the series, whereas um, the voltmeter is connected in parallel. Let's now continue this to add some more devices to it. So we've talked about the rules of the game before, so let's add now what I would, uh, well, in the analogy, I would call them, well, I'll just bring in some chairs. I'm not call them chairs, they are chairs. I'd bring in some chairs, so that's what I've tried to draw here in my crappy drawing. Can you see I've got a, you can see I'm not an artist. No one's ever invited me to art school. You can see why. You can see a little chair right here. So what I would say is that if you're going to, you know, cross something like this right here, you'd have to, you know, eat chocolate in order to cross a chair. I don't know if that makes sense. So before, when we didn't have anywhere to cross, you would just come from the battery and just sort of eat some chocolate on your way out. But in this case right here, if we've got the chair there, I think it, or I hope it makes sense to you that if I was going to walk across here, can I see you'd eat your chocolate when you pass over the chair? So in this case right here, chairs are going to represent resistors because chairs are going to cost you chocolate. Resistors are going to cost you potential. In other words, V. You know, like if it's a one volt. So let's just say again, if at the battery I gain one volt, in other words, I gain one piece of chocolate, then I have to use up one piece of chocolate. So in this case, I'm gonna draw a resistor as a little square like this with an R. And that means that it's gonna cost me maybe, uh, well, in this case, if it's one volt here, I'm going to eat one volt of potential here. So now I'm mixing the analogy I know in the real circuits, but this is how I like to do it. So if you look at it, you gain one, a piece of chocolate here, you gain one volt. That means as you cross the chair there, you lose one volt. So there really is sort of a gain and a loss. And I think now we can start actually looking at a series of circuits. We're gonna define this. First of all, we're going to define uh, resistors. So resistors themselves, um, we're going to say that they have a unit of ohms. So that's why uh, resistors, they're actually, that's maybe a key thing right here. We'll just say, so the units of resistance, so we'll say R, equals resistance, and this is measured in a unit we call ohms. It looks like, uh, well, this is a Greek capital omega. Uh, so this is the unit we use, so it's called uh, resistance. So this is the value of this. In the analogy, it would represent like the height of the chair, if that makes any sense. So that way, as I'm passing along, maybe I have two equal sized chairs. So what I wanna do now is, uh, this is given by the way, so you're given that the total resistance, what that means is that the equivalent resistance here is given by just the sum of all the different resistances. So um, this is really important. First of all, you get this on your data booklet, so you don't have to memorize this. Series circuits, the equivalent resistances is just add up all the resistors. So that's what we have here. So what I hope we're going to be able to do is kind of derive from intuition the results of Kirchhoff's laws. You know, this Kirchhoff or Kirchhoff, I've heard them called different things. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce it right, but uh, I'll just say Kirchhoff and hopefully you'll forgive me if I say it wrong. At least I'm going to be equally wrong. I'll at least be self-consistent. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna show you the result of Kirchhoff's laws. We're gonna have a separate video showing you how to do them. This thing called loop law and the junction law. But, um, the results themselves, I think, are more important. And I think that's where a lot of students don't have intuition. Here, we're going to get intuition from it. So we're going to kind of come up with the result of this, hopefully. So imagine now I've got real circuits here, but I'm going to still use the analogy to help me. Can you imagine here, this is a battery. Imagine it's a one volt battery. So it's like, you know, you get one piece of chocolate from the analogy here. So as you're a coulomb of charge, you pass by here and everyone has to follow this circuit, right? Everyone has to go around. You don't have a choice. So as you go around here, imagine you had two equal sized resistors. In other words, two equal sized chairs. So wherein before I was, you know, crossing here, it was clear if I gained one volt, you know, if I gained one volt, sorry, here, I would then lose one volt. What happens when I have two chairs? If they were equal height chairs here, does it make sense what I would do? I mean, most people have intuition here. Think about it. If you gain one volt here, and, uh, so one piece of chocolate, let's just say, how much chocolate are you going to eat in order to get over both chairs? And most people know it's half. Wouldn't you eat half here and half here? Because you know intuitively, without thinking about it, that the amount of chocolate you gain, remember, it has to be used. 
So because it has to be used up, that means, you know, in this case, I would eat a half and a half if they were equal sized chairs. So you already have some intuition about this. Now think about this. What if one of the chairs was taller than the other? Would it make sense to you then that maybe I would eat, I don't know, like 0.7 and then 0.3, something like that, maybe. So, you know, taller chairs or bigger resistor values means, you know, you might need to use up more or less of the potential. But you still somehow know through intuition that the sum of them has to equal that amount. So this is why I'm going to write down what I think is really, really important, that V total. So what does this right here mean? That means the total sort of potential right here across the battery. When I say total, I mean across the battery. So we could say VT. Some people call it V0. What this means is that you can redraw this whole thing as if the battery, see, it thinks there's only one resistor. The battery is going to act like there's just one resistor. You could redraw this as just one resistor whose resistance is just the sum of these resistors. You'll see that in more context, that'll make more sense. But in this case here, if I look at V total, then I hope you're okay with this, that that'll be equal to V1 plus V2 plus dot, dot, dot. So what do I mean by that? What I mean here is that, look at this here. If, notice I'm not drawing all my different detectors everywhere because that would get really annoying. I mean, I could. And I could have a detector. I could say, all right, I'm going to measure the voltage, or sorry, the potential difference right here across this. Can you see that? So remember, if they were equal size chairs, can you see here, I would measure a drop in one uh, half of a piece of chocolate. And over here, I would measure a drop of one half of a piece of chocolate. So you have to imagine your little voltmeter sitting across all these things. And if over here, it would measure V1. If I placed it here, see that? It would measure V2. And so on. So this here would be V2, this would be V1, this here would be VT, would be measuring it across the battery like this. And just to show you how it would be plugged in. Of course, that makes the circuit messier. That's why I'm trying not to mess it up. Of course, I have, so it's a bit ironic. So do you see how if I had a whole bunch of them, I would just have to add those values up? So maybe I had three resistors that are equal size. And can you see you do like one third plus a third plus a third? Because you know it kind of has to equal that whole amount. So you already have intuition. By the way, this is the um, loop law result of Kirchhoff's law. We have another one for current as well. Imagine I put an ammeter right here, right by the battery. Can you see that? Right by the battery if I put one there. Imagine how many coulombs per second I'm counting here. Or in other words, students per second in the analogy. Imagine I compare it to right beside R2. I could call that I2 right here. And maybe right beside R1, I could call that I1. And can you see how number of students per second wouldn't really change? I'm not allowing students to separate and go different paths. So in this case right here, I hope you can see that my IT, in other words, the total current here, will be equal to just the current in, you know, current near I1 plus uh, equals, sorry, the current in I2 equals dot, dot, dot. In other words, as many different currents as I have. There we go. This, by the way, these are the two results of uh, Kirchhoff's loss here. This is really important that you can have some intuition for this. Uh, next, then, I hope this is going to make even more sense. Then we can go a little bit faster, maybe. Parallel circuits. Uh, first of all, we have an equivalent resistance here. So the battery is going to act as if there's one resistor, but it works a little bit differently. This one's given on your data booklet again, because 1 over R total is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So that's how you deal with parallel resistors. So if we look at parallel circuits here, let's look at this here. If we're going to look at this, imagine then I'm looking at the potential. In other words, you know, the voltage values here. So this one right here, VT, if I'm measuring that right there, compared to V1 right here, and compared to V2 right here. If I was going to measure those potentials here, those difference in potentials, imagine this. You have to really think about which path you take. For Kirchhoff's laws, it's important to think about what loop you take. Imagine you're a little coulomb right here. Can you see where I'm pointing on the screen here? Imagine you're a coulomb right here, and you go around, and you choose to go this way. Wouldn't that make sense? You could do that loop. If you do this, and then imagine you're a different coulomb. A different coulomb might take this path. Look, it might take the big loop. So can you see here there's two loops? There's two different paths you could take, either this small one here or this bigger path. But if you're one coulomb, you have to think about the analogy here. Remember, imagine you gained one piece of chocolate here at the battery, so one volt. That means as you go along here, what are you going to eat when you cross this uh, chair here? In other words, what are you going to eat right here before you get back? Does it make sense you're going to eat one whole volt here? And what if you did this path? What if you did the, you started off this, you did the big path right here. Wouldn't you also eat one volt in order to get back? 
So I don't know if this will make any sense to you. I hope so. But then it means the total potential difference here at the battery is going to equal V1 equals V2 equals dot, dot, dot. So in other words, the potential differences here will be the same in parallel. Because remember, you just have to think about the intuition. I think it'll help here. And let's do it for a current. Imagine your uh, little ammeter right over here. Let's say you're measuring all the students per second here. That would be I zero, uh, IT in this case. IT. And now I'm going to measure compared to it. Like, imagine a little ammeter that's like sitting right here beside R1. We'll measure I1 here. Does it make sense? We don't have so many students per second because some of the students per second might have gone this way. Some of the students per second are this way. So if you're measuring right here beside R1, you're not getting all the people per second. Not compared to this. But can you imagine that the people per second here plus the people per second in R2 here, so I2, those would be equal to this. So in this case, that's why these ones are here. They add. So the currents add. And these, by the way, are the results, again, of Kirchhoff's law. So if you actually work out Kirchhoff's laws carefully for the loop law and the junction law, this is the result. Uh, this is what it leads to. So you somehow need to be able to have some intuition here. I think that will really, really help.